Elizabeth Warren went on Rachel Maddow's show to talk about the terrifying provision added to the new budget bill. Let's watch. Senator Elizabeth Warren today in the Senate giving a speech in which she basically whipped Democrats in the House to not vote for the government funding bill that Republicans have sent up from the House uh, unless a last minute provision relating to the big banks uh, is taken out of that funding bill. Joining us now for the interview is Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. Senator Warren, thanks very much for your time tonight. Thank you. It's good to be here. So specifically, what's your objection uh, to this specific provision in the budget bill? And did you know it was coming? Uh, so let's start with the second part. No, I did not know it was coming. I don't think anybody knew this was coming. But what the Republicans did is they pushed a bunch of terrible financial bills into the negotiations. A lot of attacks on Dodd-Frank, on the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And the Democrats beat them back. But this is the provision that stayed, and it is a real stinker. What this one is about is that after the financial crash, we said to these big financial institutions, you've got to take the riskiest part of your trading, separate it out, so that if it explodes, when it explodes, it's not going to take down the insured part of the business, the deposits that are insured by FDIC insurance. And that provision has been in Dodd-Frank all along. Everybody has adjusted to it. But what happens now in the spending bill is they just repeal that provision, which mm. means that the taxpayers ultimately will be on the hook if they get out there, engage in derivatives trading, and it blows up the entire financial institution or the entire economy. Now, it's very important that you understand exactly what this means. After the subprime mortgage crisis and after the Great Recession or during the Great Recession, Dodd-Frank came along and it regulated in some mild ways the market to try to prevent the next Great Recession from occurring. But it was very weak. Uh, they didn't really go after Wall Street and they didn't really crack down with strict rules. But there were a handful of rules that were good rules. This is one of those rules. The idea that if an investment bank wants to do very, very risky bets, well, that's fine, but you cannot do it and get bailed out by the taxpayers. You cannot do it, and if you screw up, have the taxpayers run in and save you for the bad decisions that you made. And now, what Congress is saying, or specifically what the Republicans are saying, and a lot of establishment Democrats are going along with it, they're saying, yes, we want the taxpayers to bail out the big banks if there's another crash and the crash is from derivatives. We want these big banks and these investment banks to take as risky a, a bets as they want and if things go south, the taxpayer saves them. See, this is the, the old trick. You privatize the profits and you socialize the losses. So this way, you've set up a system where it's a win-win for you. And remember, how did we get to this point? Well, we got to this point because the big banks and Wall Street and people with power and money, they bought the politicians. Their lobbyists bought the politicians. So now the politicians do whatever those people want them to do. So when they say to them, hey, if our bets go wrong, have the taxpayers save us, have middle class families save us, the politicians say, yes, sir, absolutely, sir, I'm on it, sir, let me jam it in this bill at the last minute and hope that nobody notices. Well, guess what? Elizabeth Warren noticed. Also, let me add that this is something conservatives and liberals should be together on. If you are a true conservative, what does that mean? Well, you claim to believe in small government. You want to get the government out of your way. Well, then, why would you be in favor of socialism for the rich? Why would you be in favor of your tax dollars going to people who wear suits and ties on Wall Street who are already rich and who made their own decisions and who failed on their own? Why should you have to fund their screw-ups. You shouldn't have to fund their screw-ups. In fact, isn't the whole idea of a capitalist system that, hey, if your business does well, great, 
you get rich and you can be happy. But if your business fails, well, tough. That's the way the system works. Survival of the fittest. You weren't good enough. You couldn't cut it. Sorry, your business is gone. Well, why doesn't that apply to Wall Street also? It applies to you if you own a deli, if you own a little convenience store, if you own any small business in a town or city, it applies to you. You have rugged capitalism, a rugged laissez-faire system. But the people on Wall Street, no, 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 they don't have capitalism. They have you and I propping them up when they make mistakes. And guess what? When they make mistakes, there are terrible implications for the world economy. When they make mistakes, we lose trillions of dollars. Did you know that when the market bottomed out uh, from it, during the Great Recession, after the subprime mortgage crisis, in total, the amount of wealth that evaporated because of the actions of people on Wall Street amounted to $9 trillion. Because of their terrible decisions, $9 trillion went missing. And then now, the Republicans are to tell us, and a lot of establishment Democrats are to tell us that, hey, if that happens again, you should rush in and save them again. You should rush in when we are all struggling and make it so that you struggle more by giving more of your money to them, even though they screwed up and caused the problem in the first place. If you're a true conservative, if you're a true liberal, or if you just have common sense in your head, you should be totally against this. Everybody should be with Senator Elizabeth Warren on this.